All the problems that you see in the world are aggregated from one source. Now, it's hard to really say that it can be pinpointed to one source, but it can. And I'm going to prove it to you in this video. Okay, and what I mean by one source is that you have to look at what creates the source. So you can say it's this thing or that thing, but what's behind that thing? There's people that create that thing. And in particular, I am referring to a thing when I say one source, but there are people behind that thing. Now, some people might already have a hint as to what I'm going to talk about. Okay, but let's just start with a preface. People are depressed, they're obese, and this is happening all around the world, not just in America. People have mental problems of all sort. Uh, people talk about how, oh my gosh, I hope things get better. And I hear this a lot, right? I hope things get better. Oh, I hope people start looking at it. Oh, I hope. And it's good to have faith, but that is if you are also doing what must be done to create that condition of hope. Because you can sit there in your faith, you can sit there in your hope and say, well, yes, I want everything to get better. And uh, you know, I think this is the truth and I hope everybody sees the truth. But there's also a level to which you have to teach the truth. You have to bring it to people. You have to put it in different formats. You need to be the arbiter, the person who's aggregating, the facilitator, the teacher of that truth, of that knowledge. If you see something that other people do not see, that's a moral obligation on your behalf to share it with others. So you can say the one source of problems is ignorance or people not telling the truth or not uh, not stopping the problem, uh, any problem that is, okay? And that is right there, one of the issues, right? Is right there, people are allowing evil, good people, any people allowing evil, nobody should be allowing evil, right? You, should you agree that evil is bad and shouldn't be allowed in any form at all if it's evil? Uh, well, if it's evil, then it's evil. It's not supposed to be, right? We have to learn from that. We have to create new actions. We need to prevent that. Um, but we can't say it's necessary. And a lot of people sometimes say that evil is necessary. The only necessary evil there is, is the evil that teaches us to prevent more evil. That's the only necessary evil there is. The teacher, that is chaos. Because chaos is natural and always going to happen. So when people are afraid of freedom, which is a hot topic in today's world, especially as things get worse and worse, and especially with health independence, you know, freeing your body, freeing your mind, similar and the same. When people look at that and they see, well, it's freedom and there's chaos happening within the body when you have a disease or there's chaos happening within the world when there's all these mandates or people telling others what to do or telling others what to think and you have all these ideologies and people fighting each other that's chaos and it teaches us to say well wait why do we have to be on this side or that side we can unite we don't have to be on either side right and it also teaches us wait this food gives me heart attacks diseases oh this medicine is not as great as everybody thinks and everybody's taking it and you know we're being told to do certain things with our body or certain things with our minds you can see it on both ways that freedom is an essential need i talk about in my previous videos how it's something that everybody desires okay so we understand this but still what is this problem that i'm talking about what is this one source of all the problems well it would have to be the thing that is breaching upon our freedoms because let's be honest freedom is what allows all the prosperity in the world everything you see from the creativity of a single glass of water to an essential oil required required this required creativity even just mining a stone having to bring it to people and know what to do with it and people have all sorts of methods and you have to realize that we have created a world of intelligence because we are intelligent if we use our intelligence on behalf of the world's intelligence. See, all we're doing is learning from what is already here to apply what is in here. We are becoming more of our nature. We are using more of our nature for the natural world around us. We're developing as a human species. This is something I talk about as well in my previous video with continuing humanity's evolution our destiny ultimately our purpose and i talk about this a lot because it's how important it is okay but let's look at other aspects before i really detail what this one source is of all these problems people are doing the same thing this is another issue right if i'm saying there's one problem well it's probably because a lot of people are contributing to this one problem otherwise i can't really say it's one thing it would have to be a bunch of different things 
But if it's one thing, that means there's a lot of people contributing to one thing, an aggregate, a mass amount of people, a centralization. Okay, and so that they're also dependent on the same thing. Okay, so now I added another another thing. So they're not just doing the same thing, they're dependent on the same thing. I'm going to relate this to something that might be touchy for some people. Politics. People are doing the same thing. They're all voting. And people are dependent on the same thing. The lawmakers. The Congress. The quote-unquote government. This thing. So now I introduce this thing. What is government made of? People. Who creates government? People. People are behind government. And isn't it anyways we the people? We're all the government? So then... We see that if we are to blame the government on anything, we're really just blaming ourselves, or we should blame ourselves. And if we're not blaming ourselves, we're not getting to the root cause as, what, as to what needs to be blamed. Because what needs to be blamed is ourselves, if we are the ones who created that very system which we're saying has failed us. And when people say, man, I don't like things, I hope things get better, why are they saying that? It's likely due to some level of culture, some level of music of people going crazy. But why are people going crazy? Why? I mean, are what are they talking about? You ask them, and they're talking about external worldly things or things happening that are out of usually their own control. But then why is that? Why are things happening in people's lives that are in their lives things that they don't want to be in their lives. And I'm referring again to government because government enters the lives of people and people don't want it in their lives. It's clear, do you want government in your life? Now you might say, yes, I want government for this or for that. Of course I want it in my life. I just don't want it in my life you know, too much. And if you're saying that, then you understand some basic fundamentals of freedom, which is the fact that we have freedom, we have to protect it, and we have to understand that who is going to protect it? Well, we need to hire government necessarily? No, we need to take charge as a human species. We need to understand what our government is. We need to change it. We need to understand uh, the current form of government and then move into a better form, right? Because we're saying the government's the issue, so we need to change it. And it's made up of people, so we need to change the people. So let's just elect new people in. But wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Again, we're doing the same thing. We're voting. We're electing. Is that what should we should do? Think about it. If I'm saying government is actually now the source of all the problems in the world, I'm saying that people underestimate its role over every single age and century. You don't think that people have been voting for all this time, for all these years? You're talking thousands of years, and governments have rose and fallen and rising and falling and rising and falling, and you're still going to tell me that it's necessary, but we just have to change the form again, or we just have to get the right person in again. But then, how could you say that's going to be a permanent system? And how could you say it's a natural system? And how could you say it's a moral system? Because once I ask you those questions, I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty hard to answer. You've been conditioned into the state of government, which by the way, we usually refer to state as a condition, right? But we're referring to state as in government, as if they are to be the condition when it's clearly an unnatural condition. When you're born, you have to sign a birth certificate. You have to pay taxes, a third of your income, whether you like it or not, to the schools, to this, to that, even if you don't want it. That is not consensual. That is people taking your property. That is ultimately a claim over your property, and therefore that is ultimately a claim of slavery. I was pointing over there because usually my book called Slavery Gone for Good is supposed to go right there. Well, boom. I'll put it right there, right now. And I know I'm making a very big statement when I say this, but government is slavery. If you don't believe me, I'm going to put five questions on the screen to help you question the morality of government. And then hopefully you start to see why the world is the way it is. Because whether you're looking at culture or morality or any topic in between, how they become dangerous is when those opinions or beliefs or views get imposed on everybody else by threat of violence and that is where government comes in government a lot of people define as simply the monopoly on violence what it adds to the equation is merely just violence or slavery right i would say it's the same thing violence is coercion coercion against your will that is slavery because you're forced to do something that you don't want to do even if that's you getting attacked and you having to succumb to that fate that is slavery Okay, you can't say we're a slave to nature because 
that negates slavery. You know, th that you can't get rid of that condition. We're talking about man-made conditions. If you can become freer, you can become freer. If you're destined to be freer, you're meant to be freer. And when we realize that, then we realize maybe we have to rethink the whole situation. Maybe governments rising and falling is not the only method out of this. And I'm not saying, well, we need to promote anarchy either and just go crazy and chaotic, because that's not what I'm talking about. People have this black and white view of, well, it's either government or it's anarchy. I'm not saying that. I'm an abolitionist. I'm not an anarchist. But I don't want rulers. I don't want masters. I don't want anybody in control of my life or property. And you can say it's a government, but if it's voluntary, it's not a government. If I want a voluntary world where people work together, it's not a government. And it just so happens to be anarchy. But you know what it really is? It's nature. And the reason why nature is then anarchy is because anarchy just simply means no rulers, anarchon. Okay, and I make a lot of these videos always keeping in mind the new person who's watching it. If you're new to my channel, I encourage that. If you don't think all the problems in the world come from this one source, then prove me wrong. Open the discussion, at least be willing to hear me out. Because government affects everything. Like I said, if you're looking at the culture, it's pushing certain cultures, it's pushing certain narratives, agendas, of people's opinions. Because that's all a government is, is people's opinions. Because it's made by people, it's just their opinions if they're going to impose on everyone else to say this is how things must be done. And if they're doing that, then they're coercing people and they're threatening others by violence. And then if you say, well, we just kind of limit it so it just protects our assets, just protects our rights. Well, where is that limiting line? And has that been done in history before? And the truth is it has been done or at least tried so many times before and it always fails and actually turns into the most tyrannical countries and governments in the entire world so it's not something that we should necessarily tamper with and just say well yeah we should just change it because we have to really look at the nature of it if we're saying it's violence or it's slavery because we're looking at morality then it changes the whole dynamic we could have said in the 1800s that we can change the form of slavery and make it easier on the slaves but no, after 4, 000, over 4,000 years, we decided to just question the very condition itself and say, was this moral? And we led ourselves to understand that it wasn't. And society became even more productive after we ended chattel slavery in the 1800s. And that's because of the moral revolution. Same thing in the 1700s when America was founded, right? People are equal. They have equal rights. Very... Uh, you know, not aligned to having slaves at the time, but that's what then led to the end of slavery, is that idea that we have natural law or natural rights, that we are equal, that we're destined to be free. So that is, that's a unique, very revolutionary idea. So when you ask the average person, and this adds on to my point where all the problems are aggregated to one source, they don't want to deal with politics. They don't like politics. Who really likes politics? It's not fun. It's not entertaining, it can be entertaining, but at the end of the day, it's harmful because it always leads to democide, which is the number one cause of unnatural death. It's not helpful in the world if it causes democide constantly, if it constantly rises and falls and causes mass death. There has to be another alternative to this, and it has to do with awakening, has to do with teaching, and actually bringing information to people and showing what those solutions are. I've been detailing them on my channel, so if you're new to it, then I suggest you take a deep dive into the knowledge, and I'll leave more resources in the description and at the end of this video. But I've talked about this in every single way, from how society would work without government to, um, you know, Everything like the complete history of natural law and all the people who have revolutionized this idea of natural rights um, to different types of documentaries, right? Like the philosophy and the science of it. Um, and I have other ones like deism looking into this forgotten philosophy that really bridges the tie between, you know, religion and atheism or bring people together on understanding that they're free uh, more than anything, right? That's unity, that's religion, it's, it's nature, it's, it's, it's love, it's, it's what we share as a human species. I would say that is better than any religion out there. And all the religions teach the golden rule, 
So why not just teach the golden rule? You know, this, these are the questions that have to be asked. Now, if you have your own religion, that's fine. If you have your own stuff, again, that's fine. The question is, do you impose that on others? Because that's where government enters the equation. Do you want violence to coerce other people to do what you believe is right? And that is where it becomes dangerous. Okay, so we are detached from nature. That's the ultimate message in this video. So we're detached from ourselves and we're detached from nature because think about government. It's all these man-made papers and all these man-made things and identities and this person's an authority. Like who's born with a natural authority? Could you say that somebody naturally has more rights than another? No, you say they're, they're born equal by nature. Well, if that's the case, then why do we elect people? What are we doing when we do that? Because now they can do things that the average person cannot do. And they can get away potentially with a lot of things that the average person cannot do. Wow, well that's very different, right? Different responsibilities, different rights. And now all of a sudden you got a system of master and slaves. Because you gave somebody rights. And that slave might think that they're meant to be a slave. Mental slavery is the worst form of slavery. But a lot of people don't know about this. Okay, so what is government? Like I said, it's a monopoly on violence. Even worse, I call it slavery. And if you don't think that's the case, I encourage you to look into it. I encourage you to look into the resources. If you really care about this world and you really want to see a difference, you care about love, you care about all the great ideas that I talk about, morality, um, and, and people just being equal and respectful and people not worrying about politics and opposing their will and fighting over their belief systems. I'm not here to do that. I'm here to bring people together. I'm here to say, wake up. They want people fighting each other. That's called divide and conquer. That's called how they get their power. And in order to get rid of that power, you need to undermine the very power itself, its existence. And then from there, all the many solutions, freedom solutions, will be provided because that is what freedom does. It allows creativity, allows innovation, allows solutions. So if you think chaos would happen in a free world, then, well, you're fearing freedom. And if you fear freedom, will you ever be free? Thank you very much for watching. This is Corey Angelot, Nature is the Answer.